As I ventured into Iquitos, Peru, memories from eight years ago flooded my mind. Back in 2014, my friend and I ventured into a village deep in the Amazon jungles to find a local shaman to experience a traditional ayahuasca ceremony. That journey left a lasting story with me. Now, I'm back in Iquitos, this time alone, with a camera in hand and a sense of purpose. My goal is simple, to rediscover Iquitos, the Peruvian city deep in the Amazon, and to find the village and reconnect with the shaman who guided us through that eye-opening experience many years ago. Through cities, rivers, towns, and jungles, this is my journey of rediscovery in the beautiful, hot, humid, and mysterious Amazon of Peru. The journey begins in the massive metropolis of Lima, with its grid-formulated structure stretching beyond the horizons into the Andean mountains. Gradually, the clouds wash away all signs of civilization. Soon after, we glide above the untouched forests and snaking rivers of the Amazon. As soon as you step off the plane, an instant wave of humidity and heat engulfs you. Upon exiting the airport, you are hounded by taxi drivers who throw different prices at you until you give in to the pressure to bring you into town. So welcome to Iquitos. As soon as you step out of the airport, they right away jump on you to grab a tuk-tuk with you, a motor taxi, and I'm able to pay about 20 soles, but they might charge even more depending on if you're a foreigner, if you don't speak Spanish. Nonetheless, welcome to Iquitos. The road into town is a long one with motorbikes and motor taxis loudly rumbling, honking and racing all around you. Every man, woman and child seems to have a motorbike. Eventually, I would arrive at my hotel, drop off my things and proceed to the top floor for a rooftop view of the city below. Entonces, bienvenido. Welcome to Iquitos. I'm about to go exploring. Check this out. By chance, I stumbled upon a day in Iquitos when a march against the violence towards women was taking place. In a region where patriarchal attitudes and machismo persist, this event symbolized a small step towards creating awareness and promoting change. Wanting to engage in the fun, I decided to walk alongside the marchers. So the first thing that you might notice when you get to Iquitos is that it is extremely hot here. Very humid, 31 degrees and very noisy. The air quality here is really bad because there's motorcycles driving everywhere and the motorcycles don't filter the air. The air is very contaminated, it's hot and noisy. But nonetheless, welcome to Iquitos. It feels a lot like uh, Thailand. So because I'm vegan, let's go to a vegan restaurant. Vamos a un restaurante vegano. While enjoying my vegan burger, I started up a conversation with another fellow vegan, and we decided to go for a casual walk around town. All right, hey, what's up? Hello. I'm here with Chloe, and you've been here now in Iquitos for... Almost a week. It's gonna be a week tomorrow. And what are your thoughts of Iquitos? Very loud, and a lot of people. It is not like any other place I've been in South America, so it's interesting. Definitely glad to be in the forest soon, though, and like away from everything. But it's okay. It's not. It's not bad. And what is your purpose of coming here to the Amazon? So I'm here to take a retreat with Plant Medicine. Um, and I leave for that on Sunday morning, so that will be an interesting experience as a gift I hope you have an amazing trip. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Ciao, ciao. I continued to venture through the historic center as the night went from hot and humid to just humid and buzzing with mosquitoes. The streets began to fill with more Iquitos locals finishing up with their day and just enjoying some restaurants and entertainment along the boulevard that faced into the Amazon River. So if you've ever been to Thailand, Iquitos, very much like Thailand, hot, humid, noisy, lots of uh, motorcycles everywhere. Finally, after an extremely long day, it was time to go and pass out. The following day was a planned yet spontaneous adventure that involved getting lost several times. 
I asked the hotel staff where to find the lanchas, referring to the boats, and they told me to head towards the boat ports. And then, when I hopped into the taxi, he confused what I was saying and took me to the spots where tourists should typically try to avoid, especially with their phone and giant backpack. This entire area looked like a dangerous part of Lima, Peru. But, after clearing up the confusion, what I needed was a lancha rápida, or simply a rápido, referring to a fast boat. So I'm basically trying to find a boat to go to my next destination, and I told him lanchas, and apparently lancha here means a big boat, but the small boat, the one that actually takes me to my final destination, is called a rápida. So, went to the wrong destination, but nonetheless, it's actually a really cool view. There's a lot of markets here, it looks very poor, lots of garbage everywhere. I arrived to see port. I had to do a reroute. Let's go ahead and explore. Apparently, to get to the ports, it's a giant market. Makes sense. Everyone is coming from outside of the city of Iquitos. So I didn't arrive in the correct place. So now I have to go back up. And I have to go all the way down there. So let's uh, continue our adventure. Apparently it only leaves at 12 months, so I'm about two hours early. Not the most organized adventure, but adventure. I continued walking through the market streets, always being vigilant, but also taking in the amazing sights and sounds. It's not every day that you get to venture into a busy market in a city on the banks of the Amazon River. After asking more locals where to find a boat to my destination, I was directed to another narrow path that led me down a set of stairs, leading me back down towards the river. I still have not arrived at the right place. Gotta go back up, and back up we go. Then once again up the stairs and continuing through the market district of Iquitos. Everyone was looking at me out of curiosity as if I was lost. It's not every day you see a random gringo who looked like he was trying to be a vlogger with his phone in front of his face. Regardless, this felt surreal. It's not every day you get surrounded by a commerce and transportation hub of a vibrant Amazonian city. So in final, I found the location that you gotta look for Transportes Alexandra. And when you arrive, just go inside, it's 80 soles. Now I just have to wait for my boat and then we go. Finally, that only took about one hour. Five minutes later. All right, so basically I have no effing clue what I am doing. I am now on a bus and the guy says we will arrive in my final destination at 3.30 p.m. So right now it is 10.50. So that's four hours, 40 minutes of travel time, which I do not remember taking that long to get to this uh, village. But we're committed, sunk cost fallacy. Let's do this. What I didn't realize at the time is the landscape of the Amazon completely changes between the wet and dry seasons. Eight years ago when I came, it was during the wet season, hence you could take a fast boat from right out of town. But during the dry season, you need to take a bus two hours south of Iquitos, or maybe there was a decision to move the ports out of the city completely. Also, I could hear fellow passengers speaking in Brazilian Portuguese, remembering that the Amazon River continues deep into Brazil as well, as well as bordering the most southern part of Colombia. We arrived in the town of Nauta and finally started heading towards the Rapidos, waiting for us along the river. I just had the curious thing. This little girl next to me said, Gringo. So Gringo means a uh, foreigner here in Latin America. Then we began our journey around a bend in the Amazon River that eventually led to a smaller river called the Ucayali. At no point in time did I forget how ridiculous it was that I was doing this all by myself based on a memory eight years ago. Along the way, we would stop at other little towns and the locals would get off and on just like you would at a bus station. After two hours, I arrived at my final destination. All 
right, so 4 p.m. Welcome to Genaro Herrera. Now we gotta go find some accommodations and uh, continue from there. Using what little internet signal that I had, I found a hotel on the map and asked the moto taxi to take me there. So I think I am lost or this city has changed in the last eight years. Well, let's see what happens. Right now I'm going to some kind of accommodations. I do not recognize anything. Upon arriving, the owner seemed surprised and unprepared for guests. He kept telling me he had no beds prepared, but would try to do what he could. On this adventure, I wasn't picky. A bed with a pillow, blanket, and mosquito netting in the middle of the Amazon was completely fine by me. The place had two dogs who were being pestered by mosquitoes. I felt pity for them, but what could I do? Welcome to my accommodations. Then it was time to walk around and find out if this really was the place I had come to eight years ago to do ayahuasca with a shaman. The village was alive with what seemed like indigenous peoples, farm animals, and a rapid progression towards proper infrastructure. And I think I found where I stayed eight years ago. It doesn't look like much, but it was the place I stayed for four nights to do ayahuasca. And everything else looks pretty much the same. Except for all that behind didn't exist before, it was all jungle. Hey, we've uh, found where we were. Let's go find where we took some ayahuasca. So eight years ago, I came here to do the ayahuasca. I found the shaman, it is the place. Hola, es Alberto, es mi ayahuasquero. Con mucho gusto. Con mucho gusto. Y es toda la familia de Alberto. Con mucho gusto, Alberto. Hace muchos años nos, nos conocimos. Obviamente no recuerdas porque tienes muchos clientes. So anyways, uh, eight years ago we met and we did ayahuasca together with a friend. Entonces estoy aquí con Alberto Torres. Y Alberto es un ayahuasquero. Hace cuánto tiempo uh, estás un ayahuasquero, Alberto? Oh, más de 50 años. ¿Y por qué tú comenzaste a estar un ayahuasquero? De eso de mis abuelos, mis padres, me han enseñado para seguir tomando remedio para hacer curaciones a la humanidad. ¿Y cuántos, cuántas personas más o menos ya te ayudaste? Bien, bastantes. Tienen bastante curado, da tomar pulga. Y normalmente, ¿por cuáles razones la gente viene para ti para tomar ayahuasca? Bueno, sienten alguna malestar de cuerpo, algunos dolores, como algunos malos pensamientos para limpiar a ti, bequean o ¿Qué recomiendas que la persona ¿Qué recomiendas que la persona hace antes que ellos lleguen para ti para tomar ayahuasca? Si es que ellos quieren dietar, pues dietan. Si no, solamente ayahuasca no más, nada más. Hay algunos que vienen a dieta, les, dieta, les convido para que viertan mejor tipo de esfuerzo para mejor curación. Todo lo que es curación se van bien agradecidos porque no, no se van quejosos, que no hecho nada, porque todos se van bien. Tranquilo. Y... ¿Y cuántos días de ayahuasca normalmente recomiendas para una persona? Cinco, toma nomás. No, no más que cinco. No, cinco nomás, cinco nomás. Cinco nomás. No más, uh, so we sleep. Entonces, si una persona le gustaría uh, ayuda de tu especialidad, uh -huh. como ellos quieren ir para tomar ayahuasca, ¿cómo ellos pueden encontrar? Bueno, es este, por la página. Por la página. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál es la página? Casodelmaestro.com. Uh -huh. okay. Otra vez, Alberto. Alberto. Con mucho gusto. Mira muy bien. Ya ven, mira. Salud. Yeah, yeah. I was invited to do another round of ayahuasca, but I declined, instead choosing to reminisce and explore the town some more. I honestly feel like I'm in the Wild West. Well, anyways, I'm looking for food. Tiempo para buscar para la comida. So it's not hard to be vegan because now we're gonna get some uh, frijoles, arroz, y papas. Buenas tardes. El frijol tiene chancho. No sé si es con ese. ¿Es un animal? Es un animal. Uh, ¿Tiene algo sin animal? No, simplemente por cuando somos así, somos vegetalistas, no comemos eso. Ah. Nada, nada de animal, sí puede ser. 
como arroz, en la son salsa, algo. Solo arroz y ensalada. Arroz y ensalada. Eso nomás. ¿Tiene alguna salsa para el arroz? Salsa, no. So I just spoke with the locals, had a few simple questions. How was the development here in Genaro Herrera in the last eight years? I'm noticing a lot of new streets. So this is all new. They even have a school right over here, this uh, big blue thing. That's very recent, in the last six months, they say. Basically what happens is you have to vote for a particular candidate and if they win, then these people essentially get what they uh, voted for. They get the promises that were kept. That's how you get things done in most of these cities. Hopefully it happens. And I asked them about the internet. They say the internet here isn't that good, but I mean, that's in development as well. I recommend it to them to keep buying property in this area because eventually over time, the land will appreciate in value little bit by little bit. It'll, it will potentially in about 10 years or so become an Iquitos. So any property, any land that you have at the moment uh, will increase in value, but there's also a lot of territory to develop on. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Crime here in Enaro Herrera, almost inexistent because it's a very close-knit community. Everyone, for the most part, kind of knows each other. While the community is small, there isn't that much crime or... But as you have to understand over time, once these cities become bigger and bigger, people become more and more disconnected from each other. And then there's that prospect of causing crime and uh, violence and all the, the other things that come with a big city. So let me show you my accommodations. Go up the stairs. And then we continue here. They're still developing the place. You go into this magical little unit and you have these cages or beds. Yaka, tiene mi cama, and here is my bed. Very small, very simple, nothing fancy. And up here, tiene un gecko. Included with the accommodations was a beautiful Amazonian sunset, millions of mosquitoes buzzing around with their nighttime song and dance, and giant hunter spiders going out for dinner. Eventually, it was time to pass out. It was hot enough that all you needed is your underwear and a blanket for comfort. Good morning here in the Amazon jungle. Buen dia, aquí en las Amazonas. Well, I completed my mission and now it's time to return to Iquitos and then we'll go from there. At 6 a.m. in the morning, I had a casual conversation with the locals. They were curious where I was from since so many tourists are coming to their little village for an ayahuasca experience. Even later that day, a group of five Europeans would be coming in, as I was leaving. I would eventually board the Rapido, head two hours back up the river to the port of Nauta, and then the two-hour bus back to Iquitos. On the way, I thought about how amazing an accomplishment this was, and how ridiculous it was to retrace my steps from a journey long ago. Anyways, welcome back to Iquitos. I'm gonna go to my hotel, relax for the day, go find some food, enjoy the day, some more, and then tomorrow somewhere else. I'm not sure what's going on here in Iquitos, but all of these streets are under construction and everything looks very dilapidated and broken down. The only thing is that there's no actual equipment to uh, fix it anywhere. I'm not seeing anything that is actually here to fix the roads that are under construction. So quite an interesting circumstance. My friend said that Iquitos was actually quite dirty and this is a fairly decent representation of what he said. Nonetheless, welcome to Iquitos once more. Let's go find some food. As the day progressed, it went from a cloudy, rainy day to a pristine, sunny day. I went out hunting for the best restaurant along the boulevard. And then, like a bird, I would try to find the highest point that I could view the hustle of the city below. And now, welcome to the top of Iquitos. Iquitos. 
Iquitos is a busy and hot city with a pollution issue due to many motorcycles. But what makes it special is the stunning Amazon rainforest that's all around it. The city is like a tiny island of buildings surrounded by endless green forests. The Amazon is gorgeous, but be careful. Its beauty is also a wonder, full of mosquitoes, spiders, and many other creatures that are more than happy to sample freshly imported tourists. If Iquitos cleaned up its act, especially the trash on the streets and in the rivers, it could be even more majestic. That's something that the government and the people should work on together. But don't come just for the city. The real treasure is the nature outside of it. You can also try traditional plant medicines if you're up for it. So come to Iquitos, go into the jungle for a few days, and then head back out. The city has room to grow, but the adventure in the Amazon is priceless. Ultimately, my nostalgia from eight years ago was satiated. I accomplished my mission to revisit Iquitos, retrace my path towards the shaman deep in a village in the Amazon, and safely make my way back, all for the glory of adventure. The following day, still wearing one of only two sweat-soaked shirts, I boarded my flight to a city divided between the rainforests of the Amazon and the towering Andean peaks, the city of Tarapoto, Peru. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next adventure. Leonidas here, salud, saúde, and za zdarovie.